The planet is heating up. The oceans are becoming filled with plastic. Change starts now. Change starts now. We're on a countdown to zero waste. Five, four, three, two, one. This is the Zero Waste Countdown Podcast. Here's your host, Laura Nash. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Zero Waste Countdown podcast and radio show. Today, we're speaking with the VP of Marketing for UBQ Materials in Israel. Uh, her name is Liat Arad, and she's going to tell us all about a really cool uh, company that's over there that's taking basically all of our trash and sorting it and making it into a new type of plastic alternative. And uh, they're working with some really big companies that you probably have heard of. Um, so, Liat, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining joining us. Hi, Laura. Thank you so much for having us. Excited to get to chat together. Yeah, this is pretty amazing what you're doing. So I think uh, if you're if you're tuning in, you're going to be really interested to hear what's going on. Um, so tell us about UBQ and your role. UBQ is a company here in Israel that started in 2012. Uh, based on the idea of ask, answering the question, why waste waste? So we really see waste um, as one of the biggest unused resources in the world. When we look at the amount of waste that the on a global scale society is creating, it's around 2 billion tons of waste a year. Um, and that's enough to fill, that's the weight of essentially uh, 10 million jumbo jets filled with people. That's a lot, a lot of waste that we're making. And that's a, that's a statistic that's only increasing with time. Uh, so, so UBQ essentially came up with a patented technology that's able to take all of this waste that would have otherwise been sent to a landfill and create the most climate positive uh, thermoplastic on the market. So we're taking the leftover chicken together with the pizza box, together with the plastic bags um, and water bottles and, you know, everything, everything together um, and putting it through our conversion process to create a new material that can then substitute plastic, wood, cement in, in all kinds of applications to offset the carbon footprint of those final products. Yeah. And you said something really important there that actually we don't really talk about too much is that I think you're right that trash is just going to keep increasing. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of reductions in sight, especially with COVID going on right now. And everybody needs these single use masks. And I can't imagine if you have to work in a hospital, we want those people to be clean and safe. So obviously I support them wearing uh, PPE, right? But um, but there's probably a lot more garbage there with their gowns and everything. Um, so I'm sure it's just, I, I don't know how much it's increased around the world, but I'm sure trash has just increased so much in the last year. Um, so this is a really, really cool concept. So um, can you walk us through it? Like, what is the process that you are using where you are taking a mixed bag of trash, like maybe just someone's household trash, um, and then you're turning it into a plastic alternative? Absolutely. And Laura, you speak to something really important. Um, in the public mind frame, it's very easy for plastic to become positioned as public enemy number one. Uh, but a year like the year that we'd had in 2020 really reminds us that plastic plays a really important role in our society. There's a reason that it's so prevalent. It's lightweight, um, it's cheap, it, it can be used for single use things like PPE. Um, and another interesting point about PPE, specifically the masks that we wear are, are themselves not even recyclable. Um, it's something called a non-woven textile made of multiple layers of different materials. And when we, when we want to recycle products, we need to actually, as you're familiar with, do all of the sorting. So we can't, we can't put um, different materials into one bin and recycle. It needs to separate plastics, separate polypropylene from polyester and uh, PET and so forth, all of those different Products need to be separated into different streams and recycled only with themselves. And with UBQ, one of the 
one of the kind of the main part of the innovation that we're presenting in our patented technology is the ability to take all the different waste streams together and and create a new upcycled material from it. Um, so again, as I mentioned, that's all of the organics, uh, which is the food leftovers, dirty diapers have organic material. We are taking the leftover foods together with the paper, cardboard, um, and all of those things are what we consider organic. Even dirty diapers, uh, it's strange to think about, but that part is also organic. Uh, and then together with the mixed plastics, like your your face masks, your water bottles, together with your plastic nylon bags, um, we take all of that together and the organic bits get broken down into essentially the building blocks um, of organic matter. That's lignin, fibers, sugars. So it all gets broken down into the basic molecular elements and reconstituted together with the plastic. And that way we create essentially a matrix um, and a completely new material that can be compatible with all of those base resins that we spoke to um, and compatible with all of today's manufacturing processes and just seamlessly work in producing and manufacturing thousands of products today um, and essentially just offsetting the climate footprint and also the, the amount of waste that we go into it. Wow, yeah, that's really cool. So I'm I'm so happy that you're looking at taking everything because where I live, uh, when I go to places, I just see everybody putting their trash into the same places. Uh, and even at our, our train stations and stuff, Canada's pretty good about having a bin for your cans, a bin for your plastic, a bin for your garbage. But when you look inside them, because I'm always I'm always the one that's like, hmm, I wonder if people actually sort them. And I look in, I'm like, no, there is just a mix. Like people don't care. Uh, some people do, but it's just so hard to get people to sort. And you know, people have people have busy lives. You know, maybe their business is hurting because of COVID. Like you know, it's hard to expect everybody to to be so vigilant about their waste. So having having a process where you can collect somebody's waste where they don't have to separate it, they don't have to worry about it. And then you can take that and turn it into something viable. I think it's just so important. And you've been you've been doing this since uh, 2012. Is that right? That's right. The technology started in 2012, um, and only in the last, I'd say, uh, it's the start of 2018, have we kind of come out to the public with different commercial partnerships. Uh, before that, everything was really in stealth mode R and D. So. We are considered a clean tech company. And in general, when we think of tech companies, we think about always in beta and releasing things in beta. So in this way, UBQ is really different. So we really knew that we were coming out to the market with a product and a technology that immediately is met with skepticism. You know, we're not the first to say we can turn trash into treasure. And there's something that really invites skepticism there. Uh, so it was really important to us for the first seven years. It was all R&D, making sure that our before we launch commercially, our product is really ready to go to market. That means, and there were plenty of hurdles here, so not to be mistaken. We had to make sure that the material didn't smell bad, right? We, we can't put UBQ into parts of a Mercedes Benz if you get in your car and it smells like trash. Um, oh we're working on <laughs> So that's one of the hurdles, but we also wanted to make sure that the company was B Corp certified. So as many third parties that could certify that what we're doing is real and the impact that we have is real uh, was really important to us. We also got um, a lot of really incredible people on board. Uh, I like to say that the most skeptical people in the world eventually ended up um, joining our international advisory board, like Roger Kornberg, who's a Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, Connie Hedegaard, who was a, a climate activist and the one who actually uh, helped write the Paris Climate Accord for the UN. Uh, we also have John Elkington on our international advisory board. And he's essentially the godfather of sustainability, um, who really started the, the entire idea of profit, planet, and people. 
and the triple bottom line. So we're very, very lucky to have the support of some real all-stars um, and their guidance as well in the process. That's some really good endorsements. And I like to be skeptical of everything. And then, yeah, when you when you have skeptics come on board, then it's really a good feeling, right? Because you know that they've probably thoroughly analyze what you're talking about to to actually we absolutely invite it we invite the skeptics and we we believe it's healthy and that is again the reason that we we really made sure that we have all the health and safety certifications the the governance making sure that we have a full lca because in today's world when everyone is talking about sustainability it's very trendy which in a lot of ways is great what also tends to happen is a lot of greenwashing. Everyone wants to say they're green because they know that that's now the, the hot new trend. That's what consumers are looking at. But it's so important to really have a clear idea of what stands behind those marketing claims. So when we say, you know, we're an extremely, we're a climate positive material, the most climate positive material on the market, we have a full life cycle assessment um, standing behind that, that really measures all of the environmental impact, you know, from cradle to gate. Um, and that means for every one ton of UBQ material that we're producing, it's basically minus 11.7 tons of CO2 equivalent that would have otherwise been in the atmosphere. And that's just from by diverting that ton of waste from a landfill where it would decompose and release methane emissions. I know that gets a little bit technical, but but it's really important for us to have all of those uh, certifications and explanation behind the claims that we're making. Mm -hmm, yeah. So if I think about, let's say, a banana peel. So let's say a banana peel goes to your facility and then it's heated up, right? So that so this is where the banana peel is kind of converted to its basic stuff and then it doesn't smell like it doesn't resemble anything like a banana peel anymore, right? Exactly. So the banana peel together with everything else, the process that it goes through is uh, both a physical and chemical process. And part of what's important for us to also put out is that when we talk about our LCA, it's also considering the conversion process. So we're using about a fourth of the heat that um, the standard plastic resin industry uses, we heat up to uh, 200 degrees Celsius. So there's no combustion, there's no water usage, no effluence in, in all of the process. Oh, so you don't need water because you're not cleaning it, right? We don't need water because we're not cleaning it. And also there's a lot of water in the organic materials that are coming into our, into our waste stream. So that's a big thing because recycling, you typically, you know, if you're going to shred it and make it into something new, I do think there's usually a rinsing stage, right? Uh, not only that, it's just, it's often extremely energy heavy, the, the processes for recycling. But I do want to point out that we are not in competition with recycling. We think the whole world should recycle. Um, and again, when we speak to the amount of waste that exists, UBQ is saying everyone should be doing their best. We need all hands on deck for this type of, for this level of crisis in the world. Um, and UBQ is going to take all of the items that are considered non-recyclable or in the locations around the world that don't have the recycling infrastructure. Yeah, totally. And uh, I, I totally agree. Like reduce, reuse, recycle. I guess we could add convert. Absolutely. At the end. So that's really cool. I, I love that. Um, there's room for everybody in this space with zero waste and uh, with sustainability. So whatever you're doing, if it's sustainable, it's it's probably helping. Everybody doesn't have to do the same thing. So if you can reduce, do that. If you can't, um, yeah, you can recycle or you can reuse it or, uh, you know, you can send it into be changed into something new. So I think that's great. Um, I, I want to get into your partners because if you're listening, I guarantee you've heard uh, the people that, <laughs> that UBQ is making some things for. Uh, so tell us what you're doing with McDonald's. Yes, this is a really exciting partnership that we've been working on for quite a while. We have partnered actually with Arcos Dorados, which is the largest franchisee of McDonald's um, in the world. They basically own all of the McDonald's branches in Latin America and the Caribbean. And we have partnered with them in 
uh, work to kind of reach net zero and reduce their carbon footprints, we've been working with them to create new plastic trays, uh, you know, the same trays that you receive at the counter. So the, the new trays you'll see have the UBQ logo because they're made in part with uh, UBQ materials. And so we launched a first release of 18,000 trays, um, and that alone was able to divert uh, 2,600 pounds of rubbish from landfills. That's fantastic. And, you know, we can do our little changes, which are in our little, like our local communities. And, and it's so good to see. And then when you look at these giants, right, like McDonald's is a giant. So it has so much potential to, uh, to make such a huge impact because it's so big. And, and so what else is cool is that you said that the franchise owns a lot of, um, a lot of McDonald's in the Caribbean. So I've been to the Caribbean a few times and they really need help, I think, with their, with their trash because it's such a beautiful, beautiful place. But they get so many tourists that come in and they just, they like to have their single use plastic drink cup or whatever. And then, you know, where's all that stuff going? Um, Grand Cayman Island has a, a dump and it's the highest point on the whole island. And there's beautiful reefs all around the island. And I worry that it might be leaching in there. And then, you know, on the island, everybody's just using single use plastic and just putting it on the top of the dump, you know, which is this giant mountain. So um, that's great, I think, that you've partnered uh, with these people and are making these trays. Um, and uh, Daimler, who is a, a, a famous car maker, right? What are you doing with them? Yes, Daimler is the uh, manufacturer for Mercedes-Benz. And we were, uh, we've been working with them for quite a while now in producing all kinds of different uh, parts essentially auto parts. So it's important to note that what you're saying about all of the heartbreaking amount of waste in all the different locations, today UBQ is manufacturing our material out of a facility locally here in Israel. Uh, we are planning our first global expansion um, into the Netherlands in, by the end of 2022. But until then, the waste is here local. And the more and more demand we have, the more manufacturers that we're working with, the more companies that decide to use UBQ in their materials, then we're able to expand, grow larger factories around the world. And the idea is then to have essentially a really aggressive expansion plan of new factories every year so that we can have a more localized waste to material production. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that bit, that as much as it's very easy to get enticed and hypnotized by the part of our innovation that is handling waste, we're not a waste management company. We're a materials company. So we really need that full loop, exactly what you were saying about we need these big companies and these big organizations to to move forward with the demand in order to really close the loop on the cycle. Otherwise, we're just taking waste, creating another material that would go to waste. And it's we need it to go into production and substitute plastic so that we're, we're protecting the finite uh, natural resources that we have, like oil and wood and so forth. So I hope that kind of clarified a little bit. Mm -hmm, yeah. And if the McDonald's tray gets damaged or whatever, could it go back to your facility? It could go back to our facility, but it doesn't have to. So UBQ is um, a recyclable material. It's funny. We talk about UBQ like a tofu. It takes on the taste uh, and properties of the base resin that it's working with. So if the tray is, let's say, polypropylene tray and they've substituted out 20% UBQ, then that tray would just be recycled in the normal polypropylene um, stream. Or it could, of course, return back to the, a UBQ facility and we could just turn it back into UBQ. And what's crazy about our material is when we think about regular plastics, conventional plastics being recycled, what happens is in each cycle, the physical properties degrade a bit. So after one cycle, maximum two cycles in the recycling loop, it needs to receive virgin, um, virgin plastic to retain its physical properties. But UBQ, we've actually tested, and it can be looped up to five times without losing any of its properties. Nice. 
Yeah, yeah, we've talked about that before on the show, how, you know, things can only be recycled a few times. And then it's uh, usually I think here we turn them into black planters like for mm-hmm. seeds and and growing little plants you get that black flimsy kind of plastic mm-hmm. I don't think you're going to do much with it after that and <laughs> it always breaks after a couple seasons but I'm pretty sure that stuff's all all recycled from other plastic so uh West Virginia as well I saw this so UBQ um is doing something with the, the state right Yes, that was our first product launch. Um, That was our first commercial partnership, and it was really almost poetic. So we partnered up with the Central Virginia Waste Management Authority to introduce green recycling bins made out of UBQ. So it's a bin that's carrying your recycling trash made out of waste. Uh, It was a great success, and we're hoping to continue um, launching with municipalities around the world to to take on UBQ material and use it in hundreds of different products. You know, it could be trash bins, it could be fencing, it could be bricks, uh, it could be pipes. You know, UBQ can really be put into the majority of the products that we look around ourselves. The chair I'm sitting on is a plastic chair. It could be made out of UBQ. And what's great is that me sitting on it, I would have no idea if it was uh, made out of UBQ. Although now we are starting to introduce a UBQ symbol uh, that you'll have to look out for. It's a little sunrise symbol. And that way you will actually know if the chair you're sitting on is made with uh, landfill waste. Yeah, what a great idea, right? To make our recycling bins or our waste bins out of waste or recycling. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, so do you see, um, do you see like a lot of interest in waste reduction in Israel? Like, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? I've never been to Israel. Um, so what's, what's going on there? A lot of interest, a lot of people working on this kind of thing. So first of all, I would invite you to come. I know that COVID has kind of put a hard stop on a hard stop on travel, but Mm -hmm. it's an incredible country um, with a ton of innovation across all kinds of sectors, Uh, specifically around waste. uh, Unfortunately, we were not the leading, we're not the leading nation, right? Like we have a lot of pride in our cybersecurity and a lot of pride in a lot of different high tech areas. But unfortunately with waste, um, it's not our, it's not our shining spot. Uh, I, we have basically across Israel, The majority of the um, municipalities here are using one single waste bin. Uh, At best, there's a few few different trash cans for cardboard and paper versus um, plastic bottles, but it's really not a sophisticated infrastructure, and a lot of our waste is going into uh, incineration. Um, we, We basically are receiving our waste from one of the biggest landfills in the country, um, so that's how that's how we create get our feed stock. Uh, but you know, you know, like any like any country, we're definitely working on it and understand that it's a big problem. But it really is a global problem. Um, so it's something that we need to work on uh, across borders to really make an impact. Mm-hmm. It's so cool that your innovation there is reaching out to the world. Like you said, you're moving into the Netherlands um, for a project, and then West Virginia, you're already there, and then helping the Caribbean. Like I said, the Caribbean, uh, they, you know, I'd love to see them have some help to clean up and, and it's not them. It's, it's the tourists, right? Like it's such a touristy place. So everybody comes from usually the U S and Canada. Like a lot of us will go down there and then just leave a whole bunch of garbage and then go back to our homes. Right. So I'm so glad, um, that you're there. And then I have a soda stream. <laughs> I'm sure you know that that was, that was uh, made in Israel, I guess, but I think it got, I think Pepsi bought it or something. I'm not sure. That's right. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. You have it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that thing's amazing. So I actually just, instead of alcohol, I just go and make a soda stream with some lemon in it or maybe a little bit of orange <laughs> and it's so much healthier and I just love my soda stream so much. And uh, we had Pika diapers, uh, Mr. Cohen from Pika diapers come on. And so he's from Israel and he created a uh, diaper washing machine. So you can use cloth diapers and then you just stick them in this machine and it just comes out like clean and dry and perfect. Right. So um, I like some of the innovation that's coming there. And soda stream is super environmentally friendly too, I think because they have the exchangers for the, 
I think it's a CO2, right? Those little canisters. So those are just, you can exchange them. So there's really hardly any waste involved with that. And then you don't have to use the cans if you like to drink soda. I think there definitely is an uptick, not just in Israel, but around the world in clean technology, because there's just so much that can be done in this space. And it's really easy when we look at, you know, these big unicorn companies and these great investments, and we see that they're all either apps or cybersecurity. When we look at the plastics industry or the materials industry, it's huge. The market size is gigantic. And It's really a place that needs a good shakeup. So just in terms of investment opportunities, even, this is a a whole new space and and that, that provides a lot, a lot of opportunity. So I think that's also another reason why things are starting to look much shinier in the space of clean technology and waste technology, because the, you know, the audience and the target market is global. It's huge. The uh, applications are across industries. You mentioned that we're working with McDonald's. We're working with Daimler. We're also working with Mineti, which is uh, the largest hanger manufacturer in the world. You know, sometimes it's these these products that we don't even necessarily think about, but. Mineti produces over 100 million hangers a year. It's that one item that every clothing and fashion brand retail store has in common. They're working with Target and Walmart and Old Navy and Banana Republic. You know, name all the all the brand names you want. Those are all hangers. Those are all items made from plastic. And together, we've now actually collaborated and created a hanger made with UBQ and it's making such a big impact on their climate footprint. It's these little things and they all really do add up and they're not alone. I think most brands, most big brands and most countries are now in this race to net zero because we understand the gravity of the problem. We're all trying to really reduce our carbon footprints and UBQ is one way that's pretty seamless, right? As I mentioned, it works with the technologies the final consumer wouldn't even know unless they look for our sun symbol. And in terms of profit, and this is really important, a lot of sustainable technologies that are coming out to market are incredible, but they're extremely expensive. So UBQ is actually price competitive with virgin plastics. So we're making the decision really simple for manufacturers to say, okay, I have that same product, same quality. I don't have to do anything different. And it's the same price. It's a no brainer. Yeah, that's huge getting the price down and hangers who would have ever thought of that. But like, why do you need virgin plastic for your hangers? It's not like it's touching your food or anything. It's just, you know, you're putting your, your clothes on it. So that's a, that's a really good idea too. And we all have so many hangers and then, you know, sometimes we snap them and they used to be made with wire, so I'm, I I would imagine that plastic would be less of a carbon footprint than metal, but I'm not sure. Um, well, definitely a, a hanger that's made with uh, UBQ essentially, uh, you know, would definitely be more climate positive, right? Because yeah. we're using uh, this climate positive material. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, so are you keeping, like, are there kind of like secrets a little bit with the process so that you... Um, so that other people can't just like steal your idea? There are some trade secrets, both the process um, of how we convert the waste into a new material and the material itself are patented worldwide. Um, And beyond our patents, there are a little bit, there are essentially like trade secrets that we don't, that we don't publicize. And UBQ stands for ubiquitous, right? Yes, you did your homework. UBQ stands for ubiquitous. Um, and that is kind of a, our little wink, not only to the size of the problem. You know, trash is everywhere all the time, uh, but also to the solution, which uh, essentially everywhere you look is an opportunity and potential application for the UBQ material. So both the problem and the solution are ubiquitous. So cool. So you can you can check them out. You can Google them, UBQ materials. Uh, are you on Instagram or anything like that? Yes, we are. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Check us out. We uh, always have lots of exciting news to share. 
Awesome. That's very cool. We'll have to watch out for that. And uh, one day we'll probably see UBQ materials, perhaps in our closets or uh, in our food trays underneath our food or something like that. That would be very, very cool. Um, so thank you so much, Liat, for coming on the show and telling us all about uh, this new process. Thank you so much, Laura, again, for having us on. Uh, we are always happy to collaborate and push forward the uh, mission of a zero waste world. Awesome. That was the VP of Marketing for UBQ Materials, Liat Arad. She was speaking to us today all the way from Israel. Change starts now. This is the Zero Waste Countdown Podcast.